Welcome to Creative Living, where we show you how to live your most creative life. I'm Jane Monzuris. Today, families are spread all over the country, making it tough to host a traditional Thanksgiving. But Friendsgiving gatherings have become very popular. So on today's show, we're going to explore this new holiday and show you how to host one yourself. But first, let's see what's coming up on the show. We'll give you some ideas on delicious side dishes to bring to your Friendsgiving. A trip to a family farm that's been around for generations. And a cute DIY costume idea for your little one. Stick around for that and so much more on Creative Living. Well, the holidays are upon us and one tradition catching on is Friendsgiving. And here to help us out with some great menu ideas is Chef Steve Maynard from Tempo Urban Bistro. Chef, I love the idea of Friendsgiving, but everyone's bringing something to eat to your party. Yeah, absolutely. We used to do this back in New York where I'm from, but we would do the day after Thanksgiving and bring all our leftovers. So I have a few things to show you as far as using up leftovers, and then I brought a bunch of regular grocery items because that's how most people cook so I, I thought I'd that. show you a few things with that. Quick and easy and that's what we yeah, like. Absolutely. So give me some typical uh, ideas or typical side dishes that somebody could bring to a Friendsgiving party. Yeah well this is one that I like to do and I'll throw it together for you real quick. It's leftover stuffing, turkey, gravy, cranberries but we do it in a waffle maker. Mm -hmm. So basically what we're going to do is just give a little pan coating on there and then we're going to just put the stuffing Oh there's your leftover right stuffing. There. Yep. What a great way to utilize all the leftovers as well. Yeah. Because you always want to make something different from the food that you ate the night and before. And everybody has stuffing, gravy, turkey leftover yeah. for days. So it's one way to bring it to somebody else and let them deal with the problem and of having all that leftover. Most of the time we like these items, right? So we oh, like yeah. stuffing, we like the turkey. So we know that people are going to love this. It's like my favorite thing. The stuffing is my favorite part. And then we're going to just press it down. It's a waffle. It's a waffle. Talk about some of the popular items that people like. Popular items. I did quite a few here. Squash is always a popular mm. one. This is a kabocha squash. Great thing about it is you can eat the skin. Slice it, clean the seeds out, a little salt, pepper, um, olive oil is what I did on that. Throw it in the oven, let it roast. So this it's is done. just roasted. Ready to go. Love it. And, and cranberry jelly. We took this one. This is my wife's recipe. It's basically you add jello to it, cranberry sauce, walnuts, and um, crushed pineapple. And really anybody can make this. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. We have uh, sauteed mushrooms, super easy, garlic, parsley, salt and pepper, butter. Now are these mushrooms from a can? They're all from a can. Yeah, it's all stuff that most people will buy at the grocery store. Yeah. And then just roasted potatoes out of the can again, the little new potatoes. You can even deep fry those, season them up. And what I did here, a real popular thing, is this cauliflower rice. I use that with cinnamon and raisins and a little bit of honey there and serve it cold as like almost like a rice pudding but it's sure. made with cauliflower. Right. And then something else that I always love to do and we do this at the restaurant is a uh, creamed corn and it's so easy to make. Basically a little bit of butter in your pan, okay? Then we're going to add some shallots to that. Shallots? Yeah. Shallots. I just like to show y'all shallots yeah, when we're making, we're Everybody eating shallots. Everybody loves to yell that. <laughs> uh, a little salt and pepper and then I'm going to dump in some of this just frozen corn. By the white sweet corn, and most everybody seems to have a bag of corn in their freezer. And it's very simple, just bring a heat to it, and what I'm going to do to cream this out, rather than any, adding any cream or anything, yeah. mascarpone Ooh. cheese. And again, this is an idea that's simple, it's not going to take up your whole day. Oh god, it's a, a couple minutes, and it's something you can throw together, and it's simple. Okay, so we have all of our ingredients in here, mm. and we're going to bring this to the dish. And it smells delicious. Mm -hmm. Mm. And we'll just do a little fresh chive on top of that. And now, let's see what we got for a waffle. In yes, here. let's check out the leftover waffle. Okay. There we go. And as you can see, it's got nice and crispy. And again, a great way to use your leftovers. Mm -hmm. Now, pull a piece of that out of there for you. Ooh, look at that. Yeah, if you would hold and it right then, there. Oh, a little gravy on top. Right, of course, Fill gravy. It up. Love that. And some of the cranberry sauce. And I cannot let you go before you tell me about this. This is my grandmother's macaroni pie and what she would do, she'd always use all her leftover pasta. It's egg, cheese, cream, bake it in the oven with a little salt and pepper so and 
This is a secret family recipe. No secret anymore. No secret anymore, no. but share those with your friends giving, Absolutely. right? Absolutely. Chef, thank you so much for all this great info. You're welcome. Thank awesome. You. For more information about Tempo Urban Bistro, just head to their website. Using fresh ingredients from the farm is the best way to make a side dish. And at Confrida Farms, they've been growing produce since 1922. The holidays are a really special time at Confrida Farms. We do our own fresh baked pies. You know, we have all the basics, apple, blueberry, uh, strawberry, rhubarb, pumpkin. We also have a couple different ones like Fruits of the Forest, which is a blend of a lot of different fruits. What makes our pies so special is most of the pies have over two pounds of real fruit inside of them. They're all made with a natural crust, all natural ingredients with no preservatives. We don't use jelly or any kind of additives that you might not recognize. It's the most natural pie you can get. All the ingredients are regionally sourced, we're never available. For our apple pies, we do our best to try to find um, Ida Red and McGowan apples as locally sourced as possible. We found through experience that those two types of apples uh, have the best texture for an apple pie where they don't completely break down but they have a, a good amount of bite to them. We do over 20 different types of pies so it gets a little hard to remember all of them. So to order your pie you can uh, give us a call at 401-827-5000 or you can pre-order your pie online at confritafarms.com slash shop or you could always come by the farm market order it in person as well. We have more than just pies this year for the holidays. We also have turkeys sourced from Plainville Farms. It's some of the best fresh turkey you can find. It never has that gamey taste. It's always got a nice, um, sweet, delicate turkey taste. This year for the holidays, we also have rib roasts and ribeye roasts. These roasts are certified Angus beef, completely boneless, and you can custom order it to any size you'd like. We also have, for the holidays this year, locally sourced hams from um, provided by Nyman Ranch. Nyman Ranch always uses uh, local independent farmers throughout the New England area. They have a network across the country of over 750 different farmers. Our meat department is new to 2019. When we were creating our meat department, we wanted to consider the standard of quality that we have here at Confritas Farm Market. With our produce, people have come used to getting that. We needed our meats to match that quality. All of our meats are certified Angus beef. Everything we have in our case, you have the guarantee that it's 100% domestic, raised in the United States. We also have a variety of frozen meats available that all come from family farms in the Situate and in the Rhode Island area. We actually have a team of butchers on staff. They can custom create any order, they can fulfill any order you have. We offer everything from freshly ground beef to uh, fresh cut stew meat, stir fry, we do ribeye steaks, strip steaks. For all of our meat products, you can visit us at 2150 Situate Avenue in Hope, Rhode Island, or you can see our weekly specials online at confritafarms.com. Okay, here's a fun fact for you. The first written form of the word Friendsgiving was used in 2007 on Twitter. Stick around, there's more coming up on Creative Living. We'll show you the place to take your kids to have fun while learning and a table setting that your friends will envy at your next gathering. Creative Living is brought to you by Confrida Greenhouses and Farms, Rhode Island's top choice for high quality plants, fresh produce, and delicious gourmet foods in Delhi. Time for another Sunday drive as we head to Nelson's Landing for some cliff jumping. Hi, I'm Burton Hughes, your partner in adventure, and this is Subaru Sunday Drives. Today we are heading to Nelson's Landing for some cliff jumping. That's on the Colorado River, just over the border in Arizona. We're in the brand new 2019 Subaru Ascent, 
And this is Subaru's full-size sport utility vehicle. It has amazing power. 260 horsepower, it tows up to 5,000 pounds, and it is a lot of fun to drive. And today we're traveling with the Life Christian Church Youth Group. Well, part of it. So they wanted to come along today and show us how it's done. I have to say it's back to nature. Um, there is something for the whole family. I saw a couple little chihuahua dogs out here playing in the water. It was really cute. And of course, the bigger kids are going up the mountain and climbing around and then jumping off the cliff. Uh, jumping off the cliffs is uh, tons of fun. If you do it and you like it, then you can continue to jump off. But if you don't like it, then at least you get to say you did it. Like my brother always says, the hardest part is just getting yourself to do it, but gravity will do the rest and the water will catch you. So the first time I dove off, I slipped and I got blisters on my arm. But it's okay because that's all part of a learning process. Today was really fun and exciting and I enjoy it here. It's also like an escape to just like be a kid and like not worry about like jobs or anything to do. It's really cool. It gives me Hawaii vibes and it's, it's really nice. I like it. It's a really cool place. And on the way here, there's some really cool little uh, shops and uh, looks like antique stores and things like that that you can stop along the way. We just left our cliff jumping excursion to Nelson's Landing and we decided to take a, a little detour on the way back to Las Vegas and we ended up at Hoover Dam right here just outside of Boulder City. And it is a beautiful day. Look at this dam. Isn't it one dam sight? It's been a long day, but it's been amazing. I'm Burton Hughes. This is Subaru Sunday Drives. Until next time, keep on trucking, keep your seatbelt fastened, and enjoy life. We continue our road trip as we head to Las Vegas where the Discovery Children's Museum is providing fun and education for the kids. Discovery Children's Museum is a nonprofit organization. We've been here in the community for 29 years and we're very proud to be a hub of this community. Discovery Children's Museum is one of the largest children's museums in the country. We have 26,000 square feet of hands-on exhibits and play activities for children. All of our exhibits incorporate STEAM learning into their exhibits so that kids are learning as they're playing. So on the first floor, we start in Toddler Town, our area for little learners aged birth through five. Adjacent to Toddler Town is our fantasy festival area where kids are learning about stage production, theater, and acting. And we also have a full-size pirate ship and castle where kids can play. In Waterworld, kids get to put on their raincoats and splash around, but they're learning about the force of water and it powers our cities. We have an actual mini Hoover Dam and there are lessons here about our most precious resource, water. So the Discovery Lab is our newest addition at the Discovery Children's Museum. It opened in February of 2019 and we're so proud of this space because it's the first public maker space of its kind. We are offering no tech to high tech ways that children can learn here in the Discovery Lab. So Discovery Lab is on the second floor, which is the same floor as our Eco City. I love the Eco City because it's teaching children about working a job and earning a paycheck. We have a cafe. There's the Children's Hospital, they're helping to build the Raiders Stadium here in Las Vegas, and of course the grocery store, one of the most popular features here at Discovery Children's Museum. It's a very collaborative way of children learning and working and playing together. So third floor has our Young at Art exhibit where children are learning for the first time about line, perspective, visual thinking, texture, and Patents Pending is our area for our youngest inventors. Here they get to design inventions, build a car, test it out, see if their design is flight worthy, earthquake proof, you name it. We want kids to make a mistake, figure it out, and solve the problem that they want to solve. So our staff are one of the most engaged staffs at any children's museum I've ever seen. 
They're all educators. They are here to work with you and your child and to help them learn. One of our strongest partnerships at Discovery is with the Clark County School District. We welcome hundreds of Title I school children and other field trips here to the museum every year, and we take our programs into the community, both into the schools and throughout our valley. So our activities at Discovery Children's Museum change every day, and the best way to learn about those are to visit our website at discoverykidslv.org. At your next gathering, set up a make-it-yourself bar serving beer, wine, soda, and soft drinks. Keeping it simple can help you spend more time with your friends. Here's what's coming up next on Creative Living. Great advice on designing that perfect table for your friends giving. And if you're still at a loss for a kid's Halloween costume, we have the cutest idea for you. Having fun exploring community, culture, food, imas with sous vide? Head on over to yourview.com for more videos. You may have your menu already planned for Friendsgiving, but what about your table setting? Here's some creative ideas to get your table ready. If I'm doing a Friendsgiving party, I will ask uh, different people that I think might uh, need to know each other. I like to connect people. So when I invite um, a larger number of people, I like to seat them strategically so that they can get to know each other and hopefully develop more friendships later. Especially during the fall months, it's nice to have dinner parties outside to enjoy the weather. And I like to bring um, some of the foliage and, and greenery that is growing outside onto the table. I actually like to veer away from traditional mums and fall flowers. I like to use roses, especially in the colors of fall. I like to bring flowers in from my garden. I love using herbs that are in the garden or even tree branches. I like to repurpose things when I set a table, I bring things in that I already own. For example, a, a scarf might could be used for a table runner. A lot of times when people come together for a dinner party, and if, especially if they don't know each other, it's hard to have meaningful conversation and it's kind of awkward. So what I like to do for a Friendsgiving dinner party is to have people bring something with them uh, that, that is special. It might be something that was given to them by a friend or a relative or something, an heirloom from, from their past, and they bring it as part of the actual setting, and then they have something to talk about during the dinner. This particular table has a lot of memories for me and uh, a lot of special pieces that people have given me. The, the table uh, runner is actually a scarf that my friend in Australia made for me. This china right here is from my grandmother. And then I've got these, this glassware that is from a friend who got it in a, a vintage antique shop and brought it for this particular occasion. Then I've got this dish here that was from my other grandmother. I love putting cheese boards on tables um, and this particular board was made by a friend here who did a beautiful job on the woodwork and makes gorgeous platters that I use a lot on my tablescapes. This dish here was made by him and I use it as a bowl. Uh, in, uh, even things that are decorative in your home, you can put them on a table and, and display food really well. Thanksgiving, of course, is all about giving thanks. It's giving thanks to uh, our families, to our friends, to God, whatever we're thankful for. And it's the same with Friendsgiving. And sometimes it's even more meaningful because uh, you're with people that you actually choose to be at the table and maybe not so much family that you may only get to see once a year. Okay, grab your old clothes, because next we're making the cutest costume for your little stinker. Share your creative style on Instagram with us at Creative Living Show. Creative Living. Imagine what you can do. 
For more great videos highlighting all that's happening across Arizona, visit yourview.com. When it comes to Halloween, you want your toddler to look cute, but you also want them to stay warm for hours of trick-or-treating. So make this skunk costume from clothes they probably already have in their closet for your little stinker. Let's get started. You'll need black sweatpants and a hoodie white faux fur, black felt, straight pins, a sewing machine or fabric glue, and polyester batting. First, measure the length from the front of the hood to the bottom of the jacket. Cut a piece of faux fur that same length plus an additional 14 inches to make the tail. This should be about 5 inches wide. For the back part of the tail, cut a piece of felt 14 inches long and 5 inches wide. Sew the sides together and stuff it with batting. In the middle of the back of the faux fur, cut a slit in the fur from the neckline to the jacket bottom to create the skunk stripes. Next, pin the entire fur piece to the jacket. Be sure to separate the slit for costume authenticity of the skunk stripes and sew it all on. You can add ears by cutting two dome-shaped pieces from your black felt and stitch them onto the hood on both sides of the white fur. Just an added touch! For the front, cut two rectangle pieces of faux fur about the length of the jacket and sew on both sides of the zipper. Remember, if you don't sew, you can use fabric glue instead. There you have it, a simple skunk costume for your toddler. Cute, warm, and no worries if there's a smelly diaper. The little sinker costume is actually perfect. Thanks so much for joining us here on Creative Living. As the holiday season approaches, we hope you spend lots of quality time having fun with family and friends. I'm Jane Manzuris. I'll see you next time.